let's take a look at something that can be baffling and confusing and frustrating in QGIS when you're making a map and then you've created a print layout. So as an example, I've got some areas of London and the data here refers to the area type. And what I've done is I've added some places. These are suburban areas and there's a point and there's a label. And in my main map canvas, what I've done is I've set this up to look just how I want it. Now I've created a print layout already. So if I go to the project menu, I already created a new print layout. So let's go to look at it. And then let me just hit refresh. And this is what it looks like. So this map covers the same extent as the map canvas because I went and selected the map on the right and I hit this button which set the layout extent to match the map canvas. But you can really clearly see these labels are massive, which is quite frustrating when you're trying to figure out how it all works. And I go back here, these are how I want them to look, but when I go to my print layout, they're just too big. So this kind of mismatch can cause confusion and frustration. So let's take a look at what we can do here. There's a number of different things, but if I just right click on the page and go to item properties, sorry, right click on the page and go to page properties, we can see my page width is 160 by 90. So that's a 16 to nine ratio. It'll fit in a PC or phone screen. If I do 320 by 180, it's the same ratio. But when I expand it to cover the page, we can see that the labels do get smaller. So that's good. That's one way you could deal with this, but it can be a bit imprecise. Let's go back to the main map. But before we do that, look at the label for Lower Belvedere. It doesn't quite go all the way across the River Thames. So let's see if it does in the map canvas. And the map canvas, no, it doesn't. So there's a number of different things you can do, but what I usually do is I'll go to the points layer that's got the labels. So I'll double click on it and I'll go to the label section and the text size is 10 points. Now I'm going to change this to meters at scale. You can also use map units. In my map, the units are meters. So I'm going to use meters at scale here. What that means is I am going to make my text sized in relation to the meters in the real world. Now, if I chose 10, the labels would be so small you couldn't see them. So let me try 500 and apply that. Okay, so those letters I think are 500 meters wide. That's too big. Let's try 100 and I'll apply that. That's too small. Let's try 200. A little bit of trial and error here. I'll try a bit bigger, say 250. Okay, so that looks okay. Maybe a little bit smaller. Let's try 220. Okay, so that's how they appear here. Lower Belvedere, just going onto the river like it was before. 220 meters at scale. I can also go to the, um, the buffer I've got here, which is 0 0.6 millimeters. I could change that to meters at scale too, but if I change that to like five, it's too small. Let's change it to 25. And I'll probably change it to about 40. So once you start doing this, it's a little bit of trial and error. Okay, so now the size of the letters and the size of the buffer around the letters is set to a meters value. So the implications of this, if I click OK, are when I zoom in, the labels, like the lower Belvedere that I'm looking at here, that, that label will stay the same size when I zoom in that out. So if I zoom further away, it'll be harder to read them. But for a map layout, this can be quite good. So let's switch back to... Let me just get the map there as it was. Let's go back to the print layout. Let's get that on screen. If I hit refresh on this... What we have now is this, this should match. So if I just double check, like the label for lower Belvedere, the E just crosses into the Thames and it does that in the main map canvas as well. Okay, good. So now these match because I've used a size for the buffer and for the text of meters at scale. This means the labels are sized relative to the real world, 
not relative to millimeters or points or whatever. In my map, <coughs> pardon me, in my map, my map units are actually meters. So I could have used map units, but meters at scale is fine. If you've got a data set and the units are in something else like feet or decimal degrees, if your units for your data are decimal degrees, then you'll have to use a very small number. And how would you know if it was in decimal degrees? You could go to information and in the CRS section, if it said yeah, degrees instead of meters there, then you would want to use a figure like 0 0.0001 or something, very low number. Okay, so go to labels, meters at scale. I did the same for the buffer and click OK. And when I go back to my print layout, let's go back to it this way. That means when I go to layout, export as PDF or export as image, we will get a final result that matches what we did in our main map canvas. And we don't get labels that look a different size. I mean, the labels here aren't particularly neat. I've just done this quickly. So I'll export as image. I will just save this as text label test. I'll click on save. 300 DPI, that's fine, save. And when it pops up with the link to the folder, I'll click on it. And then let me right click in my window that you can't see. And I'll open it with Windows Photo Viewer and I'll pull it in. And now you'll see if I make this the 100% size, full resolution, there we go. This matches what we see in our print layout and our print layout matches what we see in the map canvas. So hopefully you get the concept here. This will save you some time and energy and frustration and you'll get to the stage where you can set up your map layouts in your canvas. And then when you go to your print layout, everything looks like you would expect.